Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our science class. I am happy that you are with me today, listening, watching, and learning, and you learning that make sense. Today, I will discuss to you Quarter Two, Module Four, the reproductive parts in plants and their functions. So prepare yourself as we go on with a different journey in the world of science. Okay kids, relax because in a few moments we will now start our new lesson. The reproductive parts in plants and their function. You can see different types of plants everywhere. As you can observe, they differ in size, shape, color, smell, and even their mode of reproduction. Like animals, plants need to continuously reproduce themselves to sustain their species. Some reproduce through their seeds while some utilize other plant parts. A plant is made up of different parts, the roots, leaves, stem, and flowers. Each part has a function to make the plant healthy. Plants play a very important role in our environment, so it is to our benefit to understand more about how they work and how they reproduce. Okay kids, let's continue exploring the world of science of grade 5. Are you familiar with the different reproductive parts of a plant and its function? Plants are one of the most important living organisms on earth. They provide benefits to both animals and human beings. They produce oxygen which is needed for the survival of living organisms. Overall, the different parts of a plant have different roles to perform. It's just equally essential to know how they are propagated. Let us know the different reproductive plant parts like flowers, stems, roots, and leaf and its functions that are important in their reproduction. The reproductive parts of a flower. The important parts of a flower, which are the reproductive structure, are the stamen and the pistil. The pistil is the female organ of the flower. It has three parts, the stigma, the style, and the ovary. The stigma is the swollen structure at the end of the style. The style is a long, sticky, slender tube. The ovary is the enlarged basal portion of the pistil which contains the ovules. The stamen is the male organ of the flower. It has two parts, the anther and the filament. The anther is made up of two lobes that contains the pollen sacs. The filament holds the anther in a position tall enough to release the pollen. Do you know that some plants have varied ways of propagation? Let's take a look at the gumamela plants. Aside from reproducing naturally through its flowers, it can also be propagated through his stem by simply cutting a mature part of the gumamela plant and putting it in a container or a plant box with soil. After several days of maintaining its moisture, a new plant will emerge from it. The reproductive parts of a stem, roots, and leaf. Natural vegetative propagation is a method where a portion of a plant gets separated 
from the body of the mother plant and grows into an independent plant. The parts may be stem, roots, and leaf. Runners are stems grew horizontally above the ground. They have nodes where buds are formed. These buds grow into a new plant. Example are paper mint and strawberries. Suckers are upright shoots that grow from buds found at the base of the stems of parent plants. The banana, bamboo, and pineapple are some examples of plants that can reproduce from suckers. A bulb contains an underground stem. Leaves are attached to the stem. These leaves contain much stored food. At the center of the bulb is an apical bud. Also attached are lateral buds. The apical bud will produce leaves and flowers while the lateral buds will produce new shoots. As the plant grows and develops, it will form a new bulb underground. Examples are onion, tulips, and garlics. A rhizome, also known as rootstocks, is a type of plant stem situated either at the soil surface or underground that contains nodes from which roots and shoots originate. When separated, each piece of a rhizome is capable of producing a new plant. Examples are ginger and crabgrass. A new plant will grow out of a swollen, modified roots called tubers. Buds develop at the base of a stem and then grow into a new plant. Examples are potato, cassava, and sweet potato. Leaves of some plants grow into a new plant if they become detached from the parent plant. Other plants grow small plants on the edge of their leaves. These small plants are called plantlets. One example is kataka taka. Kids, that ends our lesson for today. Continue answering the different activities in your module 4. I hope that you learn a lot in this discussion. Good luck and see you again on the next video lesson. Take care and God bless because God loves us all.